Here we are again then for the latest podcast for the Wild Flower Bank behind Manx Radio, an ongoing long-term project to sort of just try and re-naturalise the bank. It's had some building work, it's been left fairly rough and ready for a while, and the idea is rather than just treating it and strimming it as a, an ordinary garden, a lawn every year, is to try and let it naturalise a bit more just by changing the way the area is managed a wee bit. And uh, Hannah's back down with us from the Manx Wildlife Trust. Uh, you brought the good weather with you. For once. <laughs> yeah, it makes a nice change. We're normally out in howling wind and rain. but I know. I'm just thinking maybe I need sun cream on. <laughs> I feel a bit toasty. No, look, you've tempted it. You've done it now. I, I, can, I can see a cloud heading this way already now that you've said that. Yeah. Uh, so here we are in spring now of uh, 2024. So we've gone through winter. We uh, Last year or so, we put in some yellow rattle and uh, we were out with Andre and we saw quite a few of those that actually germinated. Amazing, which was great. Yeah, that was really exciting because I think we were just, we were hoping we might see one and then we did see one got very excited and then we ended up seeing more and more which was which was terrific i think in many ways and now we're back into it's been a long old winter and a pretty soggy spring uh, so far as well the grass is beginning to grow uh, as we speak now dandelions are out we can see plants is coming up we can see plenty of daisies coming out uh, i was trying to look to see if i could see any yellow rattle and i couldn't see any directly when i was looking before but it is coming to that time where we can actually start cutting f- fairly early on when it comes to actually streaming the grass down yeah so with yellow rattle it's sort of better to do it sooner rather than later so a cut in april is really good because you're sort of reducing the competition from the grass and it will allow the the flowers to kind of come up and be able to compete better when you get into may um and yeah yellow rattles you know it it comes into leaf relatively early so it's good to sort of get that that cut in um so you're not sort of cutting down the yellow rattle and we're actually just down at the bottom end of the bank, so a lot of the bank is just down to grass. We've sown it with some of the yellow rattle to try and compete and parasitise some of the uh, some of the grass around there and help some of the wildflowers take hold, hopefully, over a period of years. But we're going to give it a bit of a helping hand down towards the building. And again, it is always this balance with some of these projects in that... Yes, they, they might not look as beautiful as you might want for a while. So actually giving them a little helping hand and putting a few extra wildflowers here and there in might not go amiss. So you brought a little selection along very kindly today that we're going to pop in the sort of, I suppose you'd call it sort of, it's not a rockery as much. I think it's the remnants uh, of some building work from uh, a few years back when there was an extra part put onto the Manx Radio building so there's still lots of old bits of rubble and bits of concrete but Andre was quite taken with this because it was fairly poor I think in nutrients not fantastically rich or deep in soil and so for for a wild flower point of view it's um, comparative heaven. Yeah, definitely. Although I'm looking at the gradient and I'm thinking it might be a, it might be a bit of a scramble trying to get them in, but um, we'll do our best. You're the woman for the job, I know. <laughs> I know. When, when I, if you hear well, gravel moving and then a loud ouch, then you know what's happened. She's like a mountain goat with a trowel when she gets going. <laughs> There's absolutely no stopping it. What have you got in the tray? Uh, so we've got a selection of things. Um, we've got a dog violet here this um little purple oh it's pretty yeah in flower yeah, it's sort of hiding um we've got lots of red clover we've got um common bird's foot trefoil um and the red clover and the bird's foot trefoil they're great to have in there because they're sort of real biodiversity heavyweights they bring lots of nectar and they're really really popular popular for pollinators so they sort of get the guys that you want in early um, while sort of other things are establishing themselves. Um, we've got self heel there, so that's like a little purple flower that's very nice. We've got a variety of um, grasses. And then this one here is Smith's Peppercress, which I find quite hard to say, so that's why I took <laughs> it a bit slowly. And that's sort of well like done. a white a white flower. Um, so those are the main... Oh, and then we've got Bulbous Buttercup, which is down there somewhere so that's most of them i think there's some other grasses in there but i'm not very good at grasses so <laughs> no grasses always yeah they um they bypass me as well i must admit hard as i might try from time to time to get a bit better on them and i think no nah, i can't remember again now which one that is and there's so many different types and which one's grass and then which one's sedge and uh, yeah anyway there's a good selection here so we can spread those around a little bit also i think again it's always a, a different difficult balancing act when you're doing projects like this to try and re-naturalise. It is a long-term project. It takes a while. And of course, if it's in an area in 
the public arena, as it were. People like them to look sort of relatively smart, perhaps, as well, or have a, a degree of, they don't want it to look like it's been abandoned. So there's always things you can do, maybe like this, planting up a few wildflowers which are sympathetic to the environment and good for, as you say, for the biosphere and for biodiversity. Also a bit of a little bit of hedging, maybe? Yeah, so I'll say about these, um, one of our conservation officers got these plants for us from one of our nature reserves so they're they're native they're from the isle of man and we're just transplanting them here just to yeah just to sort of give the the meadow a bit of a head start or i mean it's last time last year i thought it was doing very well but it's nice just you know we're adding what we can but i think yeah there's you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we know True. that um sort of leaving grass to go long isn't always popular with everyone so i feel like there's a couple of things that you can do um mowing a border around the edge so that the the grass that's left inside looks purposeful is really useful it just shows that it hasn't been left or neglected but you are that is an active choice also like howard said if you want to plant a hedge round on one side um again it kind of shows that you're doing something with the space and also hedgerows are just you know they're one of the best things that you can do for wildlife we absolutely love hedges so um yeah so that's definitely a winner excellent so that's um a couple of little things we're going to try and do here at manx radio um we also might i think the area down here God willing we ever get any sun this summer that uh, some of the staff like to come and sit out and have their lunches and such like so we'll uh, maybe put some flowers in pots down there and again I might bring up from my own patch at home where I've had uh, actually a load of forget-me-nots which have all self-seeded from somewhere probably someone's garden but they're a pretty little plant and certainly always remind me of uh, summer when I was a kid and around these borders here if I brought some of these self-seeded ones up I could dot them in which might give a little added splash of colour down this bottom border closer to the building which isn't going to interfere with the main part of the, the meadow further up there too much so where it's a bit more soily down the bottom here so things you can do like that just to Try and strike that balance between allowing things to naturalise and try and get this biodiverse sort of meadow area back again at the same time as keeping it looking like it is being managed rather than abandoned for perhaps the naysayers or those who aren't quite too certain about it and want to see uh, the area looking like it has been cared for in one way or another. OK, right, you've got your trial, um, you've got your... Yeah, yeah, but well, I was going to say you've got your boots on. No, you've got your trusty trainers on. That's fine. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be no fine. Grip. It's not that muddy. Um, Where should we go? <laughs> well, I'm reckoning if we start sort of spreading around here and maybe a couple okay. bit further up yep. before it gets too grassy, and then we'll see what we can do. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to. So yeah. So these ones. I mean. Um, so Andre said that we don't want to dig very far down because right. basically they're just in compost, and he that will sort of break down and break away so if we dig any sort of hole then the hole might be left there does that make sense i'm with you yep <laughs> so fairly fairly shallow planting fairly then. shallow and then he's just he just said give them a good stomp yeah so you just need to shallow the hole put them in stomp them in give them a water garden as well and then give them a sprinkle down yeah. and i think again it's uh it's I know whilst the rain isn't everyone's favourite, it's a good time for planting. It's yeah. a nice day today, because I yeah. think it's nice to be out not planting in the rain. But the ground is still relatively moist, which is good. And I think there's some certainly some rain or light rain forecast tomorrow. So we should be good. And if I keep an eye on them, particularly when they're young, they can dry out very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if I try and remember, if it, we do have a dry spill, mm -hmm. <laughs> God willing, uh, then yeah, I'll get out with the Manx Radio watering can once they've bought one. That's good. Yeah, because they're in these turfs that we've sort of taken from one of our reserves the the roots aren't going to be particularly long so yeah if there is if there is a dry spell then the watering them would make them happy right let's do it go to it i brought my trusty trowel if you hear any screaming and rolling of stone sounds it could be hannah falling down <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> and just to point out, we were watering there, we weren't. <laughs> yeah, well, not on this windy day. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh dear, lovely. There we go. Mission that accomplished then, uh, Hannah. Thank you very much right. for that. I'm gonna and keep uh, on the weather. we'll when keep an eye on the weather. See how it goes. And then fingers crossed, um, we'll see how these go, and uh, we'll uh, yeah come back a bit later in the year and see how it's going. Excellent. Thank you.